Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with salami bread. That's right. Believe it or not, this was supposed to be a pizza, but unfortunately, I did not have all the ingredients. So I simply used what I had and created something I'm calling salami bread, which, by the way, I thought I invented, but apparently I did not. As the web search indicated, others had thought of this before. But that's okay. I'm still going to claim it was my idea, since I do have more traffic on my channel. But anyway, that aside, I really liked how this came out, and this is how you do it. So this whole adventure started when I realized one of the neighborhood markets I shop at has started selling ready-to-use whole wheat pizza dough. So I figured, hey, let me try that out. But unfortunately, when I took it out to start to work with it, I realized I didn't have any ingredients for pizza. All I had was a few tablespoons of tomato sauce, a few slices of spicy salami, and other than some Parmesan, I really didn't have any cheese to work with. So I decided to try a stuffed bread instead. So I ended up taking my ball of whole wheat pizza dough and flattening it out into a rectangle. And as usual, we're just using enough flour to work with. So I kind of pressed it and pulled it and flattened it out into some kind of rough rectangle shape before dusting it with a little more flour and switching to a rolling pin. So I rolled that dough out pretty thin, somewhere between probably a quarter inch and a half inch, which I guess if you're into fractions is about three eighths. And once that was accomplished, I took my bench scraper, also known as one of the most useful kitchen tools ever, and I cleaned up some of that excess flour before continuing on with what I ended up calling salami bread. So one of the few ingredients I did have was nine slices of spicy salami, which technically was soppressata. But salami bread has a better ring to it than soppressata bread. So if you don't mind, we're just going to call it spicy salami. And I only had nine slices, so I did two rows of four, and I just tore up that last piece and placed it down as shown. And then once my sliced meat was placed down, I topped that with the last three or four tablespoons of tomato product in my house, which was some leftover crushed San Marzano tomatoes. So I spooned that on and spread it over as evenly as I could. And please note, we'll want to leave some exposed dough around the edge, so it will seal up properly when we roll it. So we want to leave at least an inch around the outside, and maybe a couple inches at the bottom. And then once that was set, it was time for the cheese, which was a very easy decision for me, since I had exactly one kind of cheese in my house, which was the lovely and talented Parmigiano Reggiano. So I went ahead and covered my salami and sauce with a generous layer, freshly grated, of course. And by the way, as I was doing this, I was already daydreaming about all the different combinations of meat and cheese we could use here. You know, like some ham and fontina, or how about mortadella with some thinly sliced grapes? Oh yeah, that would be good. But anyway, as you're watching this, I'm hoping you're thinking of some alternatives also. You are, after all, the boss of your bread floss. So this technique will lend itself to lots of variations. But anyway, I stopped talking to myself and finished grating the cheese, at which point I decided to finish this off with some freshly chopped herbs. So I scattered over some beautifully fragrant Italian parsley, as well as some nice fresh oregano. And that was pretty much it for my fillings. And then to help this seal, we want to paint a little bit of water around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. And once that's set, we can go ahead and roll this up. So I started rolling, and I really wasn't sure how tight I should roll. I mean, I wanted everything to stay together, but I also realized this dough was going to rise a little bit. So I kind of rolled it tight without pressing or stretching the dough too much. And right about here, I tucked in the sides, and then continued on. And of course, whenever we're rolling something like this, the end game here is to finish with the seam on the bottom. And then once we have that rolled, we will attempt to transfer it onto a baking sheet that's been lined with a silicone baking mat. And we'll attempt to do that without destroying it, which I was able to do with the help of my trusty bench scraper. So we will transfer that onto a pan and try to straighten it out the best we can. And then like almost every loaf of bread, we're going to let this rise before we bake it. And yes, I knew I had a few air bubbles in there, but I didn't care because I figured once it rose, it would be okay, which I think it was. And what we'll do once we have that panned up is lightly dust the top with flour. And then we'll cover that with a dry towel and let it sit there for about an hour to an hour and a half or until it roughly doubles in size. And I'm not sure mine quite doubled, but this is what it looked like about an hour and 15 minutes later. And I guess part of that's going to depend on how cold your dough is. But anyway, once our salami bread has proved, we will preheat our oven to 400. And while that's heating up, we will go ahead and do the final steps. So what we're going to do is give this a very light brushing with olive oil. We will do the top and the sides. And then once we've oiled our loaf, what we'll do is take a sharp thin knife and make some slashes into the top like this, about an inch deep. And while I was doing that for appearance, I also thought it would be important for the texture since we need some of that moisture and steam to release. So we'll go ahead and we'll give that surface a proper gashing. And then last but not least, I decided to give it a little dusting with some more Parmesan, which may have been overkill, 
but I will take overkill over underkill any day. And ideally, we want most of that cheese on the loaf. So let's clean up that pan a little bit and sprinkle that back over. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes or until it's nicely brown and looks like this. Check it out. That's salami bread. I really thought this had a fabulous and fascinating appearance. In fact, as I look at how those gashes baked up, I'm kind of regretting not saving this for Halloween. This would have made fantastic scar bread. Mmm, scar bread. But anyway, forget all that. It's not scar bread. It's salami bread. Which, of course, we need to let cool before we use it. So I'm going to transfer that to a rack to let it cool completely. And while it was cooling, I was thinking of all the amazing things you could do with this. And the first thing that came to mind was what if we split this lengthwise and used it to make like the ultimate Italian sub? And while unfortunately I don't have the ingredients to build one of those, what I do have is next level Photoshop skills to help you envision that. Oh yeah, can you imagine? In fact, you might not even need meat on this. I'm thinking just this with veggies and Italian cheeses would be magnificent. And virtually vegetarian. But anyway, I let my loaf cool completely before slicing in to take a look. And even though the sun had set while this was cooling and the light was terrible, it still looked pretty good. I mean, whole wheat flour never looks super beautiful. It always has like a little bit of a dingy look to it. So I think this would probably look better with regular pizza dough. But that aside, we did get a quality swirl. So let me go ahead and take a taste. Whoops, I missed my mouth. There we go. And even though the amounts of filling we used were very meager, this was still very flavorful and featured an impressive amount of salaminess. So I really did like how this came out. But of course, I hate to end a video just eating something plain. So what I did the next morning was slice up a few pieces, because I was thinking if I fry this up in some olive oil, I bet this would make an incredible crouton or crostini to serve with a salad. Or maybe instead serve these as little toast to dip in an egg. So I fried those up, and since I couldn't decide whether I wanted them with a salad or with a fried egg, I did both. And no, putting a fried egg on a salad is not weird. The French do it. And as I said before, when it comes to food, if the French do it, it's probably a good idea. But anyway, I served that up, and that, my friends, was one of the better lunches I've had in a while. And it's funny, because growing up, one of my favorite special occasion breakfasts was scrambled eggs made with fried salami and Italian bread. And this was actually very similar and brought back lots of fond memories. But anyway, that's it, what we're calling salami bread. Another classic example in the kitchen of the whole being greater than the sum of the parts. So whether you're going to serve it with eggs or a salad, or use it to build a submarine sandwich in your attempt to become a modern day picnic legend, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.